Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're, you are in for a real treat today and what we're going to be talking about is tire surface temperature modeling and using this in Chassis Sim. And think of this as a very good companion video to the last video I did, which was on um, tire pressure um, uh, temperature modeling and how that fitted into the food chain and really where this fits into the food chain is this is its natural follow-on. So let's get started. So like tire pressure, tire surface temp is another key tire performance parameter. And in particular, if you're taking a look, if you've got IRs, um, IR sensors uh, mounted to your car, you will start to see some very clear trends when you start logging um, the temperatures. So we're gonna talk about what this looks like. We're gonna talk about how it affects tire grips. And more importantly, we're going to talk about how do you model this and more importantly, how this fits into the food chain. Because unlike tire pressure modeling, where it's pretty obvious where it fits into the food chain, tire surface temp is probably, a, the, the waters are a little bit more muddy, but we're going to talk about that as um, we get into the video. So tire surface temp, what this looks like over a lap. So if we take a look at how it progresses over a lap, this is um, some simulated um, race data that we've got from an old live axle um, um, supercar, and given and particularly given that now that is effectively a defunct formula, I'm quite happily I'm quite happy to show you um, what the scalings are. Now, the big thing about tire surface temp versus tire pressure is it's a lot faster acting, and that really is the key difference between the two. Where where we sort of our last lecture on um, uh, tire uh, pressure and tire internal temps, it kind of really built up right over a series of laps till it got to a um, steady, until it got to a kind of a steady state value. Um, tire surface temp varies a lot more quickly. And we're gonna talk about the significance um, of that um, shortly. Now with chassis sim, what we're doing to keep things simple is we is we're modeling the middle surface temp. You don't want to get too carried away, say, on the outers, on the inners, because obviously that's going to re receive a lot of variation. What you want to be focusing on is particularly if you're doing correlation with IR um, sensors, is that you want to be focusing on that middle bit. Okay, so what does this look like during a corner? So what we've got here is we've got a um, sports car prototype, um, a circa early 2000s um, in a low speed corner. So what we've got here is, uh, 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 so uh, what we've got here is this trace here is um, steer. This is, um, and uh, this uh, this uh, and this um, trace here, um, the purple trace, but I'm sure someone will bring me up on this uh, because I'm slightly CP2 colorblind, um, is, um, so, uh, is the surface tan. Now, here's the deal. Your peak variation on surface temp is about 30 to 40 degrees Celsius from what you'll see trending down um, the straight. Now, in the lower speed corners, you'll typically see about 20 degrees, uh, about the 20, 25 degrees C, which is what you're seeing here because this is a um, low speed, um, because this is a low speed corner. However, that variation in the surface temp variations is what's going to lead to the sensitivities. I'm going to talk about more of the significance of that because here I actually do differ a little bit from some of my colleagues, and that's more actually based on experience, but we'll talk more about that as we get into it. But again, if you are dealing with needing to um, nail the sensitivities of a tire, this is where the surface temp comes in. Okay, so how do we dial this in with chassis sim? So you'll open up chassis sim, click on the tire, you'll go to the thermal properties. When you click on the thermal properties, we've got Heat factor multiplier, we've got thermal conductivity. They are two major knobs you're gonna be um, dealing with. Now the heat factor multiplier, that's going to control the peak. The thermal conductivity is gonna control the lag. Ruffle the thumb, more the thermal conductivity, the more the lag's going to um, be. Now, in terms of modeling this, where you model this is you use the track replay simulation. Don't use the lap time simulation, use the track replay sim. The reason you wanna be using the track replay sim is it gives a faithful indication of everything that is um, going on um, with um, the driver. Now, here's the deal. What you want to do when you're doing your correlation work is you want to nail most of the peaks and the legs. That being said, you don't need perfection here. And indeed, one of the biggest sucky wins I've seen um, with um, doing surface temp modeling, this is not just with chassis, this is with a whole bunch of um, different packages, is thinking you can nail it everywhere. You're never going to nail it everywhere. 
If you think you nail it everywhere, you're gonna spend two to three months going nowhere. And really, that's what you've got to keep in mind. Here's the thing, particularly if you've got IR sensors um, to validate to, um, that's where you want to be focusing your attention on. Okay, first things first, we've got to do about the do not pass go, do not collect $200 um, items first. Okay, if you want to do tire temperature service modeling, don't even think about doing this until you've got a really good 2D model of the tire. What I mean by a 2D model of the tire, where the traction circle radius is a function of load only. Also too, this is do not pass go, do not collect $200. You've, if you're a first timer, you've got to use IR sensors. That is, it's a no brainer. You, uh, um, you, it's, it, you don't even sort of subscribe to it. The other thing too, that when you are doing this for the first time, use a high grip circuit. We're talking circuits, say like, Great America, we're talking East, uh, we're talking East, permanent circuits like Eastern Creeks, Spa, Silverstone, circuits where you've got really, where you're pulling really, really big G, so you can see the full gambit of what um, the surface temp model is actually doing. Here's the thing, folks, you ignore both of these, it will bite, and indeed, as a case in point, um, during, particularly with the US boot camps, I actually get my US dealer, John Hayes, to, to run the Devil's Advocate, of not doing tire temperature surface modeling, and I re and he really rams home these um, uh, these two points. Now, sure, someone like me, because I've got a lot of experience, I can get away with this. However, if in doubt, if you don't have the IR sensors, you don't do this. Simple as that. Okay, quantifying the effect on tire fall. So, when we take into account surface temp, this is what we're looking at. Traction circle radius is a function of load times a function of um, surface temp. Now that function of load is what we discussed back here where we had our plot of tire force versus um, vertical load on the tire. Um, our um, surface temperature function is a normalized function that goes between zero and one. Now, um, for completeness, I really should have also have had function of tire pressure here, function of tire wear, but to keep the discussion simple, I'm just limiting at that for, um, uh, the time being. Now again, really to ram home the point, function, uh, our um, our surface function has got a max value of one. That way we can see where the surface temp is going to have its maximum effect. Okay, so you've got a couple of options that you can use. First is, is um, uh, the square function. So what we've got is we've got a pre-zone and a post-zone. And what we mean by the pre-zone is where the surface temp is below the peak grip that the tire is going to generate. Post zone is where um, the uh, uh, where you're going to be be, uh, be uh, beyond the peak, and that's pretty much your mathematical formulation. Uh, that's your mathematical formulation there. Now T and T optimum are in Kelvin, and K pre and K post are unitless. So that gives you some sort of idea of basically what it looks like uh, as a graph and what the mathematics um, looks like. Now in terms of some typical parameters where this falls, T optimum is typically about 373.15 Kelvin, or in um, human speak, about 100 degrees Celsius. Um, now, the plus of the temp function is, is it's very progressive. It's not going to do anything really weird and funky on you. And it's probably that perfect go-to where you've got a tire that's a bit more sensitive than uh, what you typically see from a, temp uh, from a typical 2D tire model, but you need a little bit more sensitivity. That being said, if you exceed the bounds, it can get really dicey, and that will catch you out with driver in the loop model. That being said, look, here's the thing, guys. About, uh, here's the thing, guys, about chassis sim. Chassis sim's a calculator; it's not a magic wand. So if you've got to go in there and modify something, knock yourself out. It's what it, that is why so many of the parameters in chassis sim are editable. So if you've got to make an adjustment, you can make that adjustment. And so typically, what you'll do for um, a driver in the, uh, for a driver in the, where you've got a um, square function with a driver in the loop model to give yourself a little bit of safety. Once you start going, say the um, the square function goes around about 0.9, you'll probably just level that off. So it's not going to do anything particularly uh, funky. And as a case in point, I have seen customer models with temp functions in where you've loaded them in with driver in the loop and the lap time simulation, and the results are stunning. And I mean absolutely stunning, not just in terms of correlation, but in terms of car sensitivity as well. The other function is the exponential function. And this is what this looks like. So we've got the T optimum where we've got some um, 
our maximum grip. We've got a pre-zone and a post-zone, but this time we're using an exponential function, and this is the mathematical form of that. And um, for those of you, I'd encourage you to hit the pause button, write that down, plot it out in Excel so you know what it's uh, looking like. Okay, so T and T optimum is again in Kelvin, K pre and K post units, and K exponential pre and K exponential post, they control the limit values. So that's pretty much where that, uh, 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 so that's um, uh, pretty much where um, that um, uh, for, uh, uh, falls into um, the food chain. Now, let's talk about some typical values. Again, T optimum about 373.15 Kelvin or about 100 degrees Celsius. K pre is about four, K post is about four, K pre is about 0.7, K post is about 0.8, and temperature scale is about 50 degrees Celsius. So that basically normalizes to the exponential function, behaves nicely. Now, if you've got razor sensitive tires, like for example, if you've got a situation where um, the driver is basically jumping on the throttle and all of a sudden um, you get big, big changes in terms of uh, what, the car, uh, uh, what the car is doing, this is your tire function of choice. The other thing too is because of the nature of the exponential function of, uh, about, uh, uh, about it, you can control it quite well in the post temperature zone. And what that means, it makes it really good for driver in the loop models. That being said, the, exp the, um, uh, the exponential function, its greatest strength is also its greatest weakness. Vis-a-vis um, uh, vis -vis that if, um, if you, you can actually overdo the sensitivity. So that's something you really need to watch out for. But again, it's horses for courses. You'll, particularly as we'll, as we'll soon discuss, you can play around with that with a chassis and tire force bumping to see what's the, appro uh, what's the appropriate code tool of choice. So determining these parameters, this is where the tire force bumping toolbox comes in. So typically you'll go into simulate tire force bumping, tire force bumping advanced, and you'll bring up the, our beloved tire force bumping toolbox window. So typically what you're doing is you're optimizing both the load and, you are mo and you're modeling the surface temp all at the same time because they're interlinked. Um, so typically you're going to start a particular start point and a delta to, uh, uh, to look in. And if you've got to go to the exponential function, you click on the advanced settings um, right here, and then that brings up the expo modes that you um, can, uh, pl can play with. The other thing too that I just want to add here is that from time to time, what you, if you do go for the thermal tire model, when you go back to the lap time simulation, sometimes you'll actually see, from, from time to time, you will see a drop off of grip. And the reason that happens is because of the difference between the way the lap time simulation drives the car and the actual driver drives the car. And what's happening here is that the actual driver, because they don't have an accurate gauge on where your peak slip angle is, where your peak slip ratio is, they will always tend to over, uh, they'll always tend to overheat the tires. Now the really good drivers will pretty much be bang on the money every time. But from time to time, one of the things that, you, that you'll have to keep in your back pocket when you go back to the lap time simulation models, is that you'll have to increase um, the global grip, grip factor slightly. We're talking, we're not talking much. We're talking about five, maybe ten percent at most, um, and that really comes down to the way that um, the drivers um, drive the car. Okay, so when and when not to use a temperature service model. This is very key. Okay, so a two D time model produces really sound correlation. So here's a really good case in point. Simulated, uh, actual is coloured. Simulated is black. So we've got, um, uh, we've uh, got speed, um, front and rear dampers, steer angle, throttle. Now to get going, your two D model is your base to get going, and you combine that with a pressure model. That's actually going to get you pretty damn. Uh, that's going to get you pretty damn close. And in particular, if you're using a driver in the loop model, two D models give you incredible levels of robustness. And that's really great for bringing a novice driver um, up to speed. It also has its value in the fact that if you're dealing with a bit of an unknown, it just takes a, a, a 2D uh, time model combined with a, with a pressure model that we discussed the other day, just gives you a level of robustness so you don't wind up by chasing um, your own um, tire. Now, here's the key. You use the tire temperature surface modeling when you're not quite getting the sensitivity that you need out of a straight 2D model. Let me give you a little war story about this. So when we were doing the chassis driver in the loop um, uh, version one beta testing circa back um, in um, 2018, we had two beta testers, one that had a thermal model, one that had a non-thermal model. 
And the one that had the thermal, uh, the one that had the thermal model, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, the sensitivities both in the lap time simulation and the driver in the loop were spot on. I mean, you, I mean, it was it was scarily accurate in terms of um, in terms of um, what it did. The two D, uh, uh, the one with uh, the driver in the loop beta tester that had the two D time model. We had, I mean, when we would make changes, um, you would see you would see changes in terms of what the driver in the loop model would do, what the lap time simulation would do. But the deltas weren't as much, and this is why I'm giving. Uh, this is why we still have this as an option. Now I realise that there are some co uh, uh, some colleagues, and um, uh, I have uh, colleagues and uh, sort of other competitors who kind of want to sort of put the tire temperature surface model to one side and look they've got good reasons for doing uh, they've got good reasons for doing that and hell if it's working for them i'm not about to intervene but if we take a look if we go back to our first plot take a look at how fast the tire surface temperature is uh, how fast that tire su uh, surface temperature is varying if you've got a car that's really razor sensitive to setup changes and particularly if the, if it's really sensitive, say if the tire or if the driver overdoes things like the steering and the throttle input, it's your go-to because the variations happen so uh, uh, happen so fast. So we at Chassis Sim kind of leave that as something in your toolbox that you can reach to when you have that sensitivity that you have to cover. That, folks, is where tire temperature surface modeling fits into the two, into the food chain. Okay, so wrapping all this up. Okay, surface temps act much faster than tire pressures on your internal temps. They're a powerful tool, and here's the big but when you have the data. When you don't have the data and you're inexperienced, this will, uh, um, this will come back to bite you. It's the go-to lever when you need, need the sensitivity. This is like um, uh, this is the this is the flip, uh, this is the this is the switch you flip. Um, you've got a number of functions to choose from. But that being said, if you don't have the data, it's not the end of the world. A 2D tire model combined with tire pressures will suffice. And that pretty much sums up the state of play right now we have on tire surface temps. So at that point, let me conclude the tutorial and we will catch you in the next um, Chassis Sim um, uh, video tutorial or next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.